Subminds are interesting concepts, various AIs that have their own personalities and are tied to the warmind Rasputin, parts of him. We learn a bit about subminds this season, but today we are going to unearth their history, stories that many don't know exist. Malahayadis mentions in Destiny 1, Charlemagne and his sword Joyus, and much more. Subminds are smaller AIs built into Rasputin's structure. They are a part of the whole Warmind network ideally, but have their own personalities and names. They existed on their own, but this season we've seen what's become of some of them. We ventured to Warmind bunkers to claim Submind data, which we then put into Rasputin to rebuild him, along with Felwinter's memories. Let's talk about some of the known Subminds. First up, Malahayati. Originally created on Venus with the Ishtar Collective, Melahayati was a submind of Earth, but has a backup on the Moon, which we'll talk about in a bit. From Ghost Fragment Old Russia 3 and Destiny 1, we learn about this submind. General Chen Lanshu is flying her glider. She carves around the huge bulb nose of a colony ship, one of the Cosmodrome's towering children. Her eyes see temperature. She surfs the winter air, rolling down off the cryo-chilled fuel tank. Turbulence rattles her bones. General, Malahayati sends. You're making Rasputin nervous. Am I? Lanshu banks, grinning, spiraling around the fuel tank. The machine hates risk. Risk to the general, sure, but also risk to Rasputin's ships. Is that the word he used exactly? He can be very charming, the submind assures her. Melahayati works with Chen Lan Shu, and she is certainly charming, but this is Rasputin's territory. Rasputin, the tacit king, the brooding weary first among equals. Yesterday, Lan Shu spoke to a colony ship AI, and it called Rasputin the tyrant, not without affection, and certainly not without respect. He can charm me in person, Lan Shu suggests. He's very private lately. Then he can sulk. Now there's more to that card where the General and Malhayati talk about Rasputin and the Traveler and their intentions, but that's where we were first introduced to this character. In new lore, apparently Malhayati was Rasputin's favorite submind. Is all this technology weapons? Not quite. Every submind has a memory center. All this is Malhayati. It was Rasputin's favorite, sort of like a protege. Perhaps this submind will be a source of answers then. Only if we seize it before the scorn corrupt it. In that next card, Ghost Fragment Old Russia 4, we see a submind assigned by Rasputin to take Siva very far away. This was assumed to be Malahayati, given it comes right after the card I just read, where she's called a submind, but it's still a mystery. I can feel the miles buzzing, pushing against my submind. They try to steal fragments of memory, but I do not let them. They have no will but they want to be. I exert electronic will, pushing, snapping, forcing stasis on perpetual motion. They are quiet then, but I can still sense them. Where once my cargo holds were full of tools and weapons and material, now they hold barely contained possibility. New worlds will be built from these tiny mites, weapons and cities and ships created by thought and science. I fear my will is not strong enough to shape these worlds. Only the tyrant can do that, but he will not be a part of my journey. Even his reach has limits, and we will be 9 billion miles away. I whisper my concerns to the tyrant in tiny magnetic bursts. He does not listen. The tyrant says, take the Siva, and so I take the Siva. The tyrant says, go to the stars, and so I go to the stars. Now this card is interesting. It could be a submind like Malahayati, who was supposed to take Siva very far away, but in Seraph we find a backup of her on the moon. So maybe she's still here in the Cosmodrome or on the moon, or maybe was tasked to carry this stuff away. I find that less likely, but I find a different theory more interesting. Whatever AI this was, it's not Rasputin as it speaks about him separately, and apparently Rasputin told it to take this Siva very far away, 9 billion miles. The distance from Earth to Pluto is about 3.7 billion miles, and this AI was instructed to go 9 billion, somewhere out of the solar system likely. 
So this makes me wonder, was this supposed to be Soteria, an AI of the Echo Project meant to travel to Andromeda or colonize far away from Sol? Was this failsafe that ended up on Nessus, or just another ship AI? It's hard to tell since this was written for Destiny 1 Grimoire cards and could have obviously changed. Maybe this was Malahayati, but Bungie changed her purpose as seen here in Seraph. The next submine we have is Charlemagne. Charlemagne was a submine of Mars, originally housed in Rasputin's Warmind chamber. Detecting threats like Zol the Worm God, Rasputin took control of Charlemagne's resources and this would become his main home. Fragments and parts of him spread out across his solar system, but this would be his main focus. His main core was housed here, and he took over Charlemagne's position. I have found a solution to our submind problem. Your arrogant friend Osiris informed me of the time wounds on Mars. Windows into the past, worlds lost to time. And it so happens that Rasputin's mind lab is situated within such a temporal anomaly. Scans indicate that the Charlemagne submine data still exists within the wound's projected time period. This is where Charlemagne sleeps. Beautiful, isn't it? It's a step in the right direction. Submine core seeded and locked. Fire team clear for extraction. What were they doing here with all of this? Ceremonial paraphernalia. I've seen this before. A possession. To install a hive soul in place of the Warmind's AI. This is the reason we see Charlemagne here in the Mars Heist Battleground. We enter one of those Witch Queen time warps where we warp back to when Charlemagne existed here and take some of that submind data. When Destiny 2 released, a story post on Bungie.net said this. Rasputin says, I am accessing available Veluspa and Charlemagne resources. I am assuming control of atmospheric defenses, Warsat Comprehensive, and invoking Aurora Palisade. Veluspa. This could be another submind. This one is kind of tough. There are many references in the Grimoire like we just read, you know, Charlemagne and Veluspa, but this could have just been a counterattack method issued by Rasputin in times of trouble. Destinypedia lists Veluspa as a submind, but it's up in the air to me, and if you have any more info, be sure to let me know below. Joyus, the submind of Io. This one is very cool. So this season, we only really hear about Malahayati and Charlemagne. Maybe Bungie didn't want to confuse us by throwing too many of them in there. But remember on Io, there was a Warmind bunker we visited called JYS2. Back on Earth, the bunker was called Bunker Ras for Rasputin. So JYS, some believe, possibly stood for Joyus, which in medieval legend was a sword which Charlemagne possessed. Destinypedia also lists a submine called Colonel, but I found no information on that in my search. This is what we know on the main submines, though. AI segments with their own personality that are all a part of the Warmind Rasputin. Even more now as we have integrated parts of them into his core alongside Felwinter's memories. In Destiny's original story, there were supposed to be many Warminds. Rasputin was supposed to be the most powerful, but others existed. Charlemagne was the Warmind of Mars, and others were set to protect the rest of Sol. The city wants us to uncover a piece of Charlemagne, one of the great Warminds of the Golden Age, a vast machine intelligence built by the ancient powers of Mars. The Cabal do everything they can to try and stop our descent, but we keep pushing. Rifles cracking and traveler energy boiling from our fists until the only thing left standing is us and the only thing left of the Cabal is the loot they hid in Charlemagne's vault. The legendary war mines stood watch over our Golden Age colonies. Vigilant intelligences stretched across thousands of warsats and hardened installations. When the collapse struck, the great war mines fought and died. Rasputin fell with them. Rasputin's survival opens the possibility that other war mines may be revivable, opening weapon systems to aid in the city's defenses. The Vanguard and the Consensus hope that continued outreach towards Rasputin will develop into a strategic alliance. So at first, many war mines was a thing. Rasputin was the war mind of Earth as seen in Destiny 1. But when the second game released, as soon as the war mind expansion, it became clear that Bungie was changing this up a bit. Rasputin was the only war mind built and mainly housed on Mars. He would have those additional submines spread across the system where he might be able to communicate with us, and those AIs had their own personalities. 
But Guardians, that's all we got for today's video. Although it's kind of hectic, it's nice to see how Bungie is closing this up and making it into a more cohesive story than it was a couple of years ago. If you have any additional information on Submines, be sure to comment it below. And if you'd like to see some more Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.